Hi everyone, Nick here, and with this video I wanted to talk about a lot of different theories that I had regarding Alien Covenants and Prometheus and the Engineers and kind of their whole role and a lot of stuff that we have been sort of finding out about them now through different deleted scenes and extra sort of featurettes and uh, the commentary for Alien Covenant. And I wanted to put it all into one video because there is quite a lot I wanted to go over and I figured why not just kind of bundle it all together because it all sort of goes together in the larger scheme of things when you're actually looking at the mystery behind the engineers, the xenomorph, the black goo, pathogen, what really happened to them, what was the settlement on the world that we saw in Covenants, what was going on with the mural in Prometheus, all these different things I wanted to kind of discuss in this uh, video. So in the Alien Covenant video titled Advent, it goes over David talking inside of his laboratory. And the entire video is recorded as a POV kind of viral style video where he's talking to the Wailing Dutani headquarters back on Earth about his discovery of the black goo, what happened to Shaw, what happened to the engineers, why he made the xenomorph, what the xenomorph can do, what is the black goo. A ton of stuff was jam-packed in this video and a lot of people have been coming to me and being like, wow, this is crazy that this wasn't in the movie and I, I agree there's quite a lot in there but there's a very interesting quote that he says regarding the engineers themselves he says there was so much potential in this world wasted by gods that feared their own might that they convinced themselves that sacrifice cleansed them of their sin but in the end they were like me creators beings that understood you must give life to both the wolf and the lamb but then they tried to banish the wolf and undo their creation so I took their secrets for myself this primordial ooze ripe with advanced nanoparticles operating off an algorithm based on evolutionary computing. It is essentially a form of radical AI, making the substance unbelievably chaotic. It generates a unique reaction to every genome it encounters reshaping life, virtually limitless in the potential and application. I've taken great pains to detail every step, every cell, every mutation. I was able to unlock new properties and tweak the organism's aggression and instinct for survival. It took years, but I finally found my wolf. Of course, the last sentence refers to David's creation of the Xenomorph, or recreation, as it's not been made entirely clear uh, due to different theories that I've had and different theories that my friends have had, you know, Mr. H reviews, uh, Alien Theory, and also just the general fan community, people thinking that maybe David didn't actually create the Xenomorph, or maybe he just created the one that we see in this movie and the Xenomorph as a species was something long ancient and uh, mysterious in the universe. This is also fueled by the realization in the Alien Covenant novelization by Alan Dean Foster, which was based off a slightly earlier draft of the shooting script for Alien Covenants, which revealed that the engineers were actually the ones that left behind the Xenomorph egg, or the Ovomorph, which of course housed the facehugger giving birth to the big chap Xenomorphs. So all of this is pretty interesting to me, you know, the biggest thing obviously to take away is how David mentions that these beings, the engineers, would partake in a sacrificial ritual which they believed would cleanse them of their sins, but in the end, they were creators just like himself. So the sacrificial ritual is of course referring to, I believe, what we saw at the beginning of Prometheus, where the engineer ingested something that resembled the black liquid. It broke down his cells to the DNA level, and he gave life to whatever world that was. It was implied to be Earth, but that's up for your imagination. The more interesting thing about his quote, though, is how he refers to them understanding that you have to give life to both the wolf and the lamb. Now, the thing that I took away from this whole quote that he talks about the goo and the engineers was that he mentions wolf a couple of times. He says that they gave life to the wolf, they tried to banish the wolf, and that David found his wolf. Of course, when David says he found his wolf, he's referring to the Xenomorph, but I was unclear as to what he was referring to when he talked about the Engineer's Wolf. Now, initially, I also thought this was referring to their Xenomorph, as, like I mentioned, in the early draft of the script, it was said that the Engineers were going to be the ones that created the Xenomorph. It was going to be, you know, pretty much confirmed, and Ridley Scott even confirmed this in an interview, saying that originally it was implied that the Engineers did make the Xenomorph, but he changed it kind of at the last minute to have it be David. Now, like I also mentioned, this was in the novelization, and a lot of people preferred the origin for the Xenomorph, where it was a product of the engineers' ancient warfare or biological experimentation. 
Another thing that leads into this theory is, of course, the murals that we saw in Prometheus, one of which very clearly depicted something that looked like a xenomorph or xenomorph-like creature, which many believed was could have been the deacon as well. But the deacon seems less likely because it was only brought to life under very rare circumstances, which were impregnation of a human, which led to the trilobite, which led to the trilobite impregnated an engineer, which finally gave birth to the deacon. So it was a very complicated life cycle. I doubt they were depicting that, but you never know. Another thing that's interesting about the actual murals in Prometheus was that it was the only piece of art for the film contributed by the master himself, H.R. Giger. And whenever I looked at the mural, it very clearly depicted the Xenomorph's life cycle, as in both of the bottom corners we can see what looks to be a facehugger as drawn by Giger himself, impregnated an engineer. Very similar to the one that he designed for the original Alien film. There's also the question of what was the other creature on the other mural when the engineer was touching its head it looked like this sort of weird biomechanical bird-like creature that was kneeling before the engineer and there's also another shot of the mural another piece of it where the bird-like creature was holding up an egg that was opened this very resembled the alien egg which is strange to me because it also leads back to my other theory that the engineers might have been the ones that created the aliens or that the engineers simply stumbled across the aliens and use them as a weapon of war in their long and deadly civil war. One interesting thing to infer from the photo of the bird-like creature holding up the alien egg is that maybe they were holding it up as an offering to their gods, which were the engineers. So there's a lot of interesting theories regarding the mural as itself, but let's get on to the other part of this where we're going to be talking about new information that was revealed about the engineers in Ridley Scott's audio commentary for Alien Covenants. So he did confirm in the audio commentary that the engineers on that planet in Covenant welcomed the Juggernaut home because those ships would leave for many years and return from seeding life. That was their primary goal. So it was like welcoming home a long lost ship of heroes, I guess you could say, in their society. Which is actually what I had made a video about a couple months ago uh, talking about my theory on why they welcomed back the Juggernaut and it pretty much is exactly spot on with what he says. Another thing that he revealed was that there was roughly 2 million engineers living Living on that settlement that were killed by David. They all huddled around in the giant uh, Colosseum Square or whatever was underneath the ship as it was routine that they would welcome ships when they came back from their space travels. Ridley also confirmed that the Hall of Heads in which David resided featured the faces of six elders of the civilization which were intellects some wise men which probably had lifespans of about 150 years. Ridley went on to say that the engineers society are the gardeners of space traveling around and sowing their influence in varying planets in the universe. Like what we saw at the beginning of Prometheus, the DNA being exposed through the water which accelerates the evolution on such planets. They are considered hired forms of life but not gods, and they were defeated by their own invention being humans which then created the AI, which eventually killed them. Ridley went on to say that the black goo can kill a planet in months, take years to clean it, evolve, and then start anew. So all of this information is very interesting to me, uh, it definitely reveals a lot actually about the engineers and their backstory, and how all of this ties into the origins of the Xenomorph, and I'm very much curious about all this stuff, uh, it's definitely a lot more interesting than kind of the actual horror slasher stuff that we saw in Covenant, I mean, some of it was kind of cool, but honestly, this is what I really want from these previous films to kind of delve into the mystery and the lore behind this universe. You know, the engineers are such interesting characters that were first introduced in Prometheus because before that we just knew them as the space jockey, the pilot that was in the chair with the elephantine proboscis, and we thought that it was just a giant skeleton, a corpse of some weird alien species. And when it was revealed that these were in fact giant bold dudes basically called the engineers, people had a backlash to it, they were upset, but ultimately they were intrigued by this new layer to the story. I think that's where Covenant veered off and kind of went to a bad direction where the story should have focused on their civilization and what really they're all about because Ridley has teased that in Awakening we'll be getting them back again, they're going to return and they're going to be pretty upset because when they find out what David did to the settlement on Planet 4. So what do you guys think about this new information that we have about the engineers? They're the gardeners of space, they sow their influence in different planets, the different societies accelerating evolution, putting 
their mark on different planets. What do you guys think of the murals in Prometheus? Did they depict a xenomorph or a xenomorph-like creature? What is the black goo now that we know that it's a radical AI basically, that it has advanced nanoparticles inside of it um, that basically shape anything, uh, you know, having a unique reaction to different genomes, but a specific reaction to the human genome in which it creates a xenomorph creature. There's also the interesting revelation that the engineers did create some sort of a wolf-like creature, which could also lead credence to the whole engineer's faction theory as well. Like, maybe he was referring to the engineers, the wolves being the ones that were the destroyers that were on LV-223, the military-like faction, and the lambs being the more religious, uh, peasant-like faction that was on Planet 4. Who knows, but all of this is very interesting stuff. Drop your thoughts down in the comment section below. I know this was a longer video, but I had a lot to talk about and go over. And I'll probably talk about this in future videos if you guys want to, like specific topics like the mural or something. Just drop it down in below. Uh, let me know what you guys want to hear me talk about. Or, I mean, if you want us to talk about it on a podcast episode, we can do that as well. Just drop it down below. I'd also really like to do a commentary track for Prometheus and Covenant, kind of get my theories and thoughts while we watch the film together. So if you guys also want that, let me know. As always, thank you guys again for watching. My name is Nick. And for more on Alien Covenant and the Alien and Predator universe, subscribe to Hybrid Network.